As I said at the time, Grant coming back, as I said at the time, 23 goals out of your team is a big, a big chunk of your, your, uh, your goal scoring form. So I know what, what I'll get from him tomorrow. And, um, but he's been a massive player for this club and, 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 and for me. And, and what he's done has been great. The tourism industry in Lowestoft has suffered a major blow with news that popular offshore powerboat racing will not be returning to the Suffolk town this summer. The races have usually been held on the weekend after the town's two-day summer air show, attracting an estimated 90,000 people to the seafront. But organisers of the P1 Superstock Powerboat Championships have opted to stage the July races at Fwelly in Wales. Well, it's been a bit of a busy day for Donovan Blake at Lords this morning to see Alistair Cook as we saw there and then straight off to this next story. Yes, alongside Ferrari, Norfolk-based Lotus is arguably the most famous name in motor racing and less than an hour ago unveiled their new Formula One car in London, their first since 1994. Well, Donovan is getting his breath back after a whistle-stop tour of the capital and joins us now. Uh, Donny, it's great to see Lotus back, isn't it? Yes, I reckon there are quite a few uh, motor racing supporters who never thought this day would ever come, but the name Lotus is back in Formula One. And just to give you a sense of heritage that Lotus has with motorsport, there are replicas of the championship winning Lotuses over the years, including this uh, JPS, the black JPS, made famous in the 70s and 80s, on display here at the venue where the new car was launched. And as you say, just about an hour ago, this was the moment when the new... Lotus 2010 Cosworth, or the uh, T127 as they described it, was unveiled to hundreds of uh, guests here at the Royal Horticultural Rooms in London. Uh, it's the car which uh, Jano Trulli and Heike Kovalainen will be driving over the championship season starting in Bahrain next month. And it was a car developed after five months at the uh, Hingham base where Lotus was uh, hatched. Uh, for the new project and the person who spearheaded the development over the past five months joins me now it's Mike Gascoigne uh, the technical director of uh, Lotus F1 Racing Mike first of all what's your thoughts now that the car's unveiled uh, well pleased that we got it here in time I mean obviously um, the biggest challenge we had was the time but uh, the whole team's done a fantastic job to produce the car um, the colour scheme is great. I think it's what all the fans around the world would have wanted to see a new Lotus looking like. And I'm, I'm just very relieved and proud of the team that's done the job. And we mentioned the heritage. The Chapman family were here to see it unveiled as well. How special a moment was that for you and the rest of the team? Well, again, it's great that they're involved and Clive and Hazel um, have been very supportive of the project and, um, you know, given it their goodwill, entrusted us with their family name and heritage. So uh, it's a very proud and privileged moment for me to be able to lead that team and unveil the car. So it was great that they were here supporting us. Brilliant. Well, wish you well for the season, Mike, and for the rest of the Lotus F1 racing team. And as I say, the season starts next month. Donny, thanks very much. Great day there. Mm. Now, it's sure to be the feel-good film of the year. At least it will be for fans of 1970s pub rock band Dr. Feelgood. They only ever had one top ten single, but became famous for their high energy and chaotic live performances. Director Julian Temple's rock documentary suggests the band, who were from Canvey Island in Essex, are one of the most important in British music history. But, as Tom Barton now reports, it also has plenty to say about Canvey Island itself. Many say they changed rock and roll. Without doubt, they put Canvey Island on the musical map. And now Dr. Feelgood's legacy is being celebrated in a major new rockumentary, Oil City Confidential. It's like a roller coaster that runs out of control. Dr. Feelgood were nothing if not a Canvey Island band. All of the original members came from within just a few streets of one another right here on the island and this place figured highly in their music and it's for that reason that Julian Temple's film is as much about Canvey Island as it is about the music of Dr Feelgood. The Feelgoods and particularly Wilco Johnson were poets of this place. They saw in this bleak melancholy a kind of visual and emotional poetry which I think you can get walking around there. You know the seawall, the walk around the seawall is... is uh, Unlike 
Most walks in England, it's, it's amazing, actually. That walk was one taken by singer Lee Brillo in 1992 on Anglia TV's Somerville's Walks. We made much of the fact that we were from this place called Canby Island and kind of it wove our own uh, mythology, really, about it. And sort of, we called it Oil City and uh, we said that the reason our music's so tough and hard is because it, it's a tough, hard place. And although we had our tongues in our cheek, there was a lot of truth in it. Lee died of lymphoma in 1994, but the band's influence still brings legions of fans to the island. We do the Lee Brillo Memorial uh, once a year. We get people come here from Russia, from America, from Australia. All of our EU cousins all come in. They've come to visit Canby because they've heard about Canby through the songs of Dr Feelgood. And they come now and tour around and see the place for themselves. <laughs> Right, good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Canby Island. The film tells the story of the band's rise to greatness and there fall from fame. After hits like Rock's X, the group descended into infighting. For those who were at the centre of the feel-good explosion though, this film is a great tribute. It's about Dr Feelgood, but it's, it's about, a, about a time and a place. And it, like Canby Island is a... It's a special place, and uh, that was, a, that, I think, was a special time. And, and, uh, and, this, uh, and this film, I think, just really tells the story very, very well. The film's currently on limited release at cinemas around the UK and will be out on DVD later this year. Tom Barton, Anglia News, can be on. And you can see more about that film, Oil City Confidential. It's all on our website. Now, here's what's coming up on the national news at half six. Could be worse. Well, here's another one of your weather pictures. No prizes, but can you guess where it's from? I bet you can't. In fact, I can probably guarantee it. It's actually snow in Menorca. Sent in by Andy Burton, originally from Northampton, but now watching from Spain via the website. Here are a few more of your pictures from a little closer to home now. Delightful, and don't forget you can always email us at any time with your pictures or your news. Yes, the email address is jonathanandbecky at itv.com. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.